everybody welcome back to my channel my name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up so today's video is the long-awaited sew along tutorial for the Green Style Creations Tempo Tights so these are athletic wear tights designed as a compression fit and we're going to be sewing them along together so what I wanted to talk to you first about was your fabric choice now you need to be choosing a lycra spandex blend fabric so we're looking at anything that is synthetic the last thing you want is to choose something like a cotton jersey anything with cotton in because the whole point of these athletic tights is that you're going to wear them for exercising in and cotton as we all know does not wick away sweat so take it from me you do need lycra fabric for this now there are loads of suppliers of lycra online um a lot more choice in the us i have to admit than there is in the uk and some of the uk sites that i've seen are actually very very expensive i'm very fortunate that i live near waltons you've all heard me harp on about waltons so much in the past and they supply amazing um lycra fabrics for dance wear swim wear and athletic wear as well so i would suggest that you try out different shops that actually sell um dance wear as well if you look at the dance wear specialists a lot of their fabrics will be suitable for um for athletic wear and yeah that's the kind of thing you need to go for um there are a few online suppliers that i know of obviously there's funky fabrics but i will be honest i think their fabrics are incredibly expensive and for me in the past i just would rather buy ready-made athletic wear than buy from funky fabrics and make my own i'll be honest because i just think it's just it's too expensive for my tastes um but there are other suppliers such as flamingo fabrics they do a good selection of athletic wear at a fairly reasonable price there's also tia knight fabrics Fabworks do a good selection as well, but theirs are only planes, and I'm sure there must be others as well. But I just wanted to show you a little bit of the kind of fabric that I mean. Right, so these are the fabrics that I've chosen to make the tempo tights with for the tutorial. This is the first one here, okay. Now, what you can see, obviously, the back of this fabric is plain, and then the front, obviously, is stripy. Now, this is a completely synthetic fabric, so it's probably made of nylon with um, spandex in there. Lycra is just a brand name for spandex, okay? Spandex is the elastane um, that gives it the stretch, basically. But you, as I mentioned, you don't want to be choosing something like a cotton jersey or a viscose jersey or anything like that because it's just not going to work not only will it not wick away sweat when you're exercising but it will also bag out in wear as well and you want these to cling to you and continue to cling to you while you're exercising it's really important um, whilst keeping you dry as much as possible so um so this is the fabric you can see that um there's the selvage there, okay? So widthways, you've got a good stretch there with recovery. And then lengthways, you've got the same amount of stretch. So you need a four-way stretch. Some people get um, stretch mixed up, so they think that this is a two-way stretch. A two-way stretch means that it stretches widthways and springs back. That's your two-way stretch and has no stretch in the length. A four-way stretch will stretch out and back and out and back both in the um parallel to the grain line and perpendicular to the grain line so it's so that's what a four-way stretch is so you need a four-way stretch lycra um i like that um these lycras this is one that i got from waltons because they're good quality you can get some lycras that are quite see-through um so you know really look at that and think about your fabric choices as well um anything like white obviously is going to be quite is going to show your underwear through if you make it into tights so the other fabric that I got is a plain one. Again, this was from Waltons and um, you know, you can see the drape on that there. If I, I've got a massive amount of this. If I show you this again, here is the selvage, this side, you've got a really good widthway stretch and again, your lengthway stretch. And this is an entire synthetic fabric and that is what you want. This is the one occasion where you don't want natural fibers, honestly, okay? So now we've made our fabric choice and, and then we'll get started on the tutorial. So I hope you enjoy and I'll see you at the end. 
Right, so today we are going to be sewing up these, which are the Green Style Creations Tempo Athletic Tights. Now these tights are a compression fit tight, which if you do cardio is exactly what you want. And I love these for running. They're absolutely amazing because they hold everything really tight which is just what you need. Now, we've already discussed fabric choices, um, pattern choices. The beauty about these tights that I really love is that you've got loads of options for color blocking or you can just do them all in one color if you like. You have the choice of a high rise or an ultra high rise. And you also have the choice of this gorgeous little sweet um, heart shaped back piece or you can have the straight back piece dependent on whether you're super curvy like me or you've got more of a flat butt. Now the instructions are amazing and um, it gives you a little diagram of fabric stretch that you need for these tights and also measurements. Now the measurements are, through, um, are lettered B to M and the good thing about these types are not only do they have the waist and hip measurement, but they also have your mid thigh and calf measurement as well. So you are able to grade between all those sizes to get the best size and fit for you. And dependent on what letter you fall into as the main sort of measurement gives you your fabric requirements down below. Now, the other thing that you can do with these tights as well is you can make them three quarter length if you don't want them full length. And they also come in a petite standard and tall size. And the PDF pattern tiles allow you to choose which tiles you want to print off for you so you're not having to print loads and loads and loads. I've obviously printed off the tall fitting for me because I'm five foot 10. Um, but that's, you know, it's great that you're able to have that choice it gives you a little bit of information here about the inseam to help you choose which size that you need to print it out. Um, and uh, yeah, and also the other notions and supplies that you are going to need. The seam allowance on these tights is three eighths of an inch, unless otherwise stated. And obviously, as usual in most PDF pattern instructions, it gives you information on how to print out, how to stick your pattern together. There's no need to cut the A4 sheets once you've printed it out. There, you basically just stick them together. So that's great as well. It means that you're saving on paper and doing your little bit for the environment. And it gives you options of cutting layouts as well. Now, for me, that's done the tall version of these tights. And I have cut out size between A, E and G, I think I've cut out. I have used approximately half a metre of each design of my Lycra. And I'll just show you the pattern pieces now that I've cut out. So there are a number of pattern pieces. And as I say, you get to choose how you want to create these, whether you want to do them all in one block colour, whether you want to um, colour block, etc and how you want to colour block as well and what I have decided to do before I go through the pattern pieces with you is I have decided to do the heart shaped back and making the full length tights on this occasion and I have done the waistband in the plain lycra and I have done the main side piece in plain lycra and then the accent pieces are going to be the front and back and the ankle pieces. So what that's given me is this here. So on each of your pattern pieces, once you've got them all stuck together and you've graded between your sizes and you've cut your pattern um, pieces out, it tells you exactly, obviously it tells you that this is the tall version and that this is the front piece that you cut to mirror images, where the grain line is, etc. All your usual markings that you expect on your patterns. So the front piece is there. I've got the um, back and front waistband pieces there. I have the lower insert there and also the back there. And then you have this piece, which is your side and also your pocket piece as well. You don't have to put upside pocket on if you don't want to, but obviously it's got the option there. So I've got all my pattern pieces cut out now. I made a decision on how I wanted the design of these tights to come together. And the next bit is the exciting bit. Let's get stitching. 
So the first thing we have to do if we are making the pocket option is we stitch the pocket to the side right sides together. So this is the side piece here and this is the pocket piece and I've already pinned them together to show you. So I have got, I don't know if you can just see that, that's one of the pocket pieces and the other pocket piece there, right sides together on the two side pieces. And then you just pin them across the top and we're going to stitch this. We're not going to overlock it first. Majority of these tights I do do on the overlocker, but to start with, we are just gonna stitch this across the top just on the sewing machine. It needs to be in a stretch stitch, so that's either your lightning stitch or a narrow zigzag stitch. So let's take this to the sewing machine and we'll get on with that next. Right, so I don't know if you're gonna see this very well, but I have stitched that with a narrow zigzag stitch on my settings were 2.7 millimeter length by two and a half width. Um, but obviously you just mess about with your own settings on your own machine to decide what works for you. Right, when you've sewn the seam at the top of the pocket and the side what we need to do next is we flip over the pocket to the right side like so and we'll do the same with this one so you flip it over like so and then what we're going to do is we're just going to top stitch that seam on both sides so that it encases that raw seam inside so we'll do that next so what you should have now is something that looks like this we've got this top stitched just there and um, I've just used my lightning stitch to do this and the same on the other piece and we're now working from the wrong side of the fabric so what we're going to do next is we're going to fold up the pocket piece to where the pocket piece bends on the fold line if you look at your pattern piece it's got a fold line across the middle so we fold up to the fold line like so and the top of the raw edge of the bottom of the pocket piece will extend beyond your um, top stitched pocket top and that's fine because that's what we want it to do because this is going to be encased in the waistband seam when we get to it later. So we do that with both pocket pieces. We fold them up at the fold line and then what we're going to do is we're going to baste both sides together of the pocket piece to the side piece underneath. So I'm gonna pin that first and then I'll show you what that looks like. So I've pinned those together now and the pocket is folded up, pinned um, the top of the pocket obviously extends beyond the top stitched seam, which is on the other side. So if we turn these over, this is how it's gonna look from the outside. Basically what you're gonna have is you're gonna have your little pocket there to put your hand in and the pocket bag is obviously on the inside and then the back seam extends beyond that so because that's going to attach to the waistband later i hope that's clear and makes sense don't worry if like me when you have top stitched the top of the pocket when you flipped it over like that it's pulled it out of shape a little bit as long as it's flat along the back um you know, um, that's absolutely fine because it's going to all pull in when it when you're wearing them. So don't worry too much about that. So we're going to baste both of these edges now on both sides, and then we will be able to attach the front pieces next. Right. So when you've basted the edges, oh, just with the basting, just make sure that you do baste within the three eighths of an inch seam allowance, so that that's obviously covered up once we attach these to the next bit but once you've basted this is what they should look like you've got a nice finished pocket top there um with the side piece just extending beyond that at the back and then your pockets are obviously the pocket bag is obviously inside now now if you don't want to attach the pockets you don't have to i find them really useful actually they're great for um you know putting your phone in if you're out running or keys or anything like that they're really handy so um have a go but if you don't want them then that's absolutely fine so next step we come to is the front pieces so these are the front pieces here that we cut out and what we are going to do is where the top slants downwards we are going to attach the front piece right side together like that um, all the way down to there so obviously this is a curved 
piece which means we're going to have to manipulate it slightly to make sure that it will curve round nicely but so take your time over this because you want to make sure everything matches up really neatly and then we're going to sew this on the overlocker so we're going to do this with both pieces I'll get it all pinned first and then I'll show you what that looks like before we overlock it if you don't have an overlocker you can do this on your sewing machine but you will need to use either a zigzag stitch which I would recommend a small zigzag stitch or a stretch stitch remember these are compression pants and they are going to be under quite a fair bit of strain so you do need a small zigzag if you are going to use a zigzag stitch but I'm going to do these on my overlocker because I have one so let's get these pinned and then I'll show you what they look like all right so it's all pinned together now and um, yeah as I say make sure you take your time over this and then we're going to take this to the overlocker and I'm going to overlock this seam on both sides and then we'll see what that looks like. Before you do overlock, make sure you do have them right sides together and that the pocket bag is on the inside. Uh, yeah, I've just made a massive boo-boo with that and the first ones I sewed up for this tutorial, I did them wrong sides together. Um, and yeah, I didn't want to undo all that stitching so I've just cut out some more pieces and started again. Yes. Okay, let's get this over. Right, so when they're stitched together as so, you should have something that looks like that. So we've got our lovely pockets just in the top there, and then we've got the front pieces sewn onto the side pieces. Right, next we come to this little piece. Now, this is an optional piece, which is why I didn't mention it at the beginning. But yeah, this is an optional gusset piece I would highly recommend you add this to your back pieces as recommended in the pattern instructions you don't have to it is optional but trust me this you would not believe how this little triangle of fabric gives you so much extra maneuverability in not just these leggings but any leggings patterns you make you know quite often especially if you curve it and you wear leggings and whenever you bend your legs the, on me especially they tend to sort of pull down a little bit at the back over your bum um, and this little triangle prevents that happening you would not believe that this little triangle could do so much but it really does so honestly I would recommend that you put this in and you, you take the time to do this. So this is the back piece, this is one of the back pieces and what the instructions tell you to do is to attach the gusset piece to the back piece along this seam here with the pointed end of the triangle pointing up. So that's the pointed end of the triangle so we are going to attach it to that bit there. So we're going to stitch, we're going to pin it along that edge there and then stitch, okay? So that's how it should look. I'll just pop that on there. It's along that seam there, it's the inseam that we're stitching it to. So when you've stitched it, it should look something like this. Again, you use 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and I have used my lightning stretch stitch for this. So that's how it should look. So you only need one gusset piece and you only attach it to one of the backs, okay? Now, what we need to do next is we go back to the side pocket piece and the front and the other side of the side piece, we are going to attach the long edge of the back piece to pretty much like we did the front piece to the you know a bit earlier so again we're working with a curve in opposite directions we need to take our time pinning this together I'll do that and then I'll show you what that looks like right so that's all pinned together don't worry if you've got little bits extending above the top and the bottom I have a little bit there it's absolutely fine because it will all match up when we come to sew everything together so you can repeat that on your, your other back piece to the other leg that we prepared earlier i'm going to overlock this seam now but again if you don't have an overlocker use a stretch stitch or a light um yeah the lightning stitch or a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine with three eighths of an inch seam allowance so let's get that done we'll do it on both legs and then we'll see what they look like right so when you've done that you should have something that looks like this you've got your front piece there your side piece with the box pocket in and then the back there and the other side has got the little gusset piece on if you've had that right so next we turn our attention to 
the bottom of the legs so these bits here we just need to add the side inserts um, so you need four of those and we'll I'll go get them and we'll show you how that looks right so I've pinned one of the lower inserts onto the main body of the leg you've got to really make sure that you don't stretch the fabric as you are pinning it to um, the fabric underneath because um, it's going to distort your finished garment if you do that. Now I just wanted to say that when you are attaching the side inserts to the bottom start off with the bottom um, the bottom of the ankle bit here so that the straight bit is attached to that and then the curved bit follows the curved bit of the um, the main side panel if that makes sense just because sometimes when you look at these especially if you're a beginner and you've not you know you're not used to sewing this kind of thing um you can look at these side panels and think how do they how do they work how do they go but yeah always start off at the ankle on the square bit and then you'll know that when it is all stitched together it's going to curve nicely like that right so we have two completed full legs now front and back what we're going to do now is we're going to place these right sides together this is obviously the the back seam with the little crotch gusset on and we are going to sew along this inseam here bring my other leg in like that and we're going to pin this little bit together there and sew that seam first right so i just wanted to show you where the little crotch gusset is and how i've overlocked that together um it does fit nicely together when you open out the back crotch you should see something like that what we're going to do next is how we've just stitch the back crotch together we're going to do exactly the same on the other side on the front crotch which is this little curve here so we're just going to pin that together and overlock that together right so when you've done um both the back crotch seam and the front crotch seam you should have something like this both right sides together next what we're going to do is we're going to open out so they uh, looking something like that and then what we're going to do is we are going to pin the inseams together and um, stitch those now what I would recommend when you're doing this if you're going to do this on your overlocker which I am is that you do do some basting stitches first because especially if you're using contrast fabrics like this you're going to want these um, side panel pieces to match up pretty pretty much perfect if you can and if you just run this through your overlocker then they'll shift and they won't be matching so I always tend to just do a few little basting stitches on that on those seams um, first to make sure that they are going to be lined up so so everything's pinned together and I have basted just round the crotch seam just with a um, long straight stitch and I've done the same with each of the areas where I'm changing two fabrics so because I want to make sure that those seams line up perfectly so I've done that in the two places on both legs there and there and the rest of it's pinned and now I'm just going to run all that through the overlock so they're all sewn together um I've gone all the way around the crotch seam let's turn them the right right way around can you see me uh, let's turn them the right way around and see what they look like I'm really excited to see how these look. So, there we go. So hopefully you'll be able to see that the inner seams, can you see those like seams there? Because I took the time, if I just show you, because I took the time to base them first before I overlocked them, they match up really, really well. Hopefully you can see that. Um, the other side let's just check the other side works as well yep yeah, there's the other side and that side there so yeah it's always worth doing that if you can um, the beauty about these tights as well is what you will see is that the back is higher than the front so that means that it really hook the really hug you in the small of your back which is exactly what you want so these are now all stitched together front and back we've got that lovely talking gussets again we've got that lovely little triangular gusset there can you see that you would not believe just how much difference that makes so next we're going to be stitching the 
the waistband so let's get on with that <laughs> So we're moving to the waistband now. I've cut out the heart-shaped um, back piece, but it, the instructions are exactly the same, whether it's the heart shape or the straight back. Um, and then there's the front pieces. So all we're gonna do is stitch the front piece to the back piece, right sides together, and do two of those. So you should have something like that when you've pinned them together. Now the front piece obviously is smaller than the back piece, so that is designed to be like that, so don't worry too much. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch these edges together. Now you can overlock them, but it does add a fair bit of bulk to these seams, so I'm gonna do them with a stretch stitch again, and then we'll move on to the next step. Once we've stitched the seams together of the waistband, front and back, what we're gonna do then is we are going to slip one waistband inside the other right sides together. So if I leave that one with, right, with wrong side out and then turn this one right side out as such, then we're gonna slip that inside the other one so that they are right sides together and then what we're going to do is we're going to match up the seams and pin pin them together like so um, and do the same on this side I really need to paint my nails you can probably see that I've got um, gloss on my fingers as well. See that there from decorating. Uh, yeah, so anyway, back to the tutorial. Let's uh, pin that together. So yeah, so then once those two seams are pinned together like that, we're then going to go all the way around the top edge just pinning it. And the instructions do say you can add clear elastic to the top waistband if you want to, just to give you extra security, but I haven't done with my other two pairs that I've made and I've found evening wearing them on runs that I don't need them they honestly don't move so you know it's an extra step that I've not needed to use now obviously it depends on your fabric choice I would say if you are using um, a non um, synthetic fabric um, with lycra in then you may need to add waistband elastic but for this what I'm using which is um, spandex nylon then obviously I don't need to use it so what we're going to do then is we're going to stitch all the way around the top waistband and again you should do this with a um, you can do it with a overlocker or a stretch stitch or zigzag and I think I'm probably going to do it on my overlocker so let's take this to the overlocker and get it stitched. So once that's done it should look something like that. What we're going to do now is, which is a step that it doesn't actually tell you to do in the instructions but I picked up this step from the jally instructions when I um, made the jally I think it's the Clara leggings and I'm going to understitch the um, one of the seams here so that it sits nicely inside and doesn't flip out. Um, again you will you can't do this on an overlocker you will need to understitch using a stretch stitch or a very small um, zigzag stitch. So when you've done the understitching your waistband should look something like that. So the next thing we're going to do is turn our leggings inside out and then we're going to slip the waistband right sides together. So that's going to be the understitching on the inside down into the waistband of the tights. So I've turned the tights inside out and I'm working from the back. So this is the back, front is there. So I have pinned all the way around the waistband. Um, or you can base this if you want and then right sides facing you need to start if you're doing the heart shaped version like I'm doing you need to start with the point of the heart of the waistband so that's that bit there um, and you need to line that up exactly with the centre back seam so what the instructions recommend you do so I'm just lining that up about there 
yeah what the instructions recommend you do is that you do some basting stitches here before you stitch it both sides so I'm just going to pin that first and then we can show you so I've got my point on the um, back seam of the actual tights and what we're going to do is we are going to start sewing from here to the V leaving the needle down pivot and then back up here and we're just going to do that to baste that little bit there okay so let's get the sewing machine set up and we'll show you how that looks right so I have set my machine at three millimeter stitch length and I'm going to sew to the point there with my needle down um, and then pivot and then we'll go back up that way so let's get going So we've reached the pivot point, we're going to turn and then we're going to carry on sewing. Okay, so all we've done there is just sew that little bit there with a straight stitch I'm not too worried about it because I'm going to be overlocking it anyway so it's going to be fine so when we turn it out the right way fingers crossed we should have that point on the back seam which it more or less is so yeah that's going to look cool so I'm going to go carry on attaching the waistband all the way around just pinning it to the inside of the tights and then we'll get it overlocked the other thing i meant forgot to mention actually when you are pinning your waistband to your tights you need to make sure do you remember how the front waistband is smaller than the back you need to make sure that the seam of the front waistband measures up precisely with the seam of front and the side panel so all I did is like we did earlier when we were sewing the tights is I've just basted those together there before I run the whole waistband through the overlock right we're nearly there so waistband is on this is the front of the pants the back looks something like that you can't really see how the heart shape works but trust me when they're on they look amazing and we've got the lovely pockets in the side there um, so all that's left to do now is to hem them and uh, yeah you can either do this on your sewing machine again with a zigzag stitch or you can just um, use a cover stitch if you have a cover stitch. I haven't got my cover stitch set up in the right colour thread so I am just going to zigzag these. So here they are, here are the finished tempo tights with pockets in the side. There you go, that lovely heart shaped detail on the back um, and uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see the legs um, with the contrast but um, these are amazing, they're so nice and these are the high waist version, well I'm saying the high waist, they're actually a little bit lower but um, you can, there is another version that you can make them much higher so um, yeah, I'm really really pleased with them. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to either um, email me. My email address is always in the description box below my videos, or you can just leave me a comment down below and I'll try and answer any questions you have. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you again really soon. Take care, bye.